Hi ladies, I'm glad you're able to join us for this devotional. I want to talk to you about imperfections tonight. I have a lot of imperfections. One of them is that I'm a little OCD. As some of you know that sew and craft and knit with me, I tend to be a little OCD. I've been known to rip out six inches of knitting just because I thought I saw a mistake that far back in my knitting. I remember doing that for my little granddaughter's first dress that I knitted for her. I really wanted the dress to be just right and wanted it to come out correctly, so I went back and took out my imperfection in my knitting. There are other times that I'm OCD with cleaning and other times when I'm not. I can be OCD sometimes with my crafts and sometimes not. Um, what it is is that I um, don't want to be OCD, but I do want things to be nice and I do want to get rid of as many imperfections as I can. Now that may mean um, I have to stop and pray and ask God to give me guidance because I'm letting my OCD take control, which is a sin. If I go too far with something that doesn't need to be gone that far with, that becomes a sin. It just becomes a different type of imperfection. I let my OCD fixing one thing become a sin, which is not good. So I ask God for help with that imperfection in my personality of being a little too OCD. Sometimes it's good to go and give the best you can give for something, take out those mistakes, but other times you need to let it go because it's really not a necessary issue. Those um, imperfections are fine. It doesn't matter. They may enhance whatever you're doing. Then when I started making these videos, I looked at my face close up. Well, you'd think I'd do that in the mirror in the morning, but <laughs> I may look very quickly. I'm sort of a tomboy, and so I don't spend a lot of time fixing myself up. So I don't stand there and stare in the mirror, put on lots of makeup, uh, go to the beauty parlor to get fixed up. I just don't do that very often, very rare. I tend to just get to work, forget my face, but doing these videos has kind of opened up my eyes and say, wow, you are a mess. Look at all those imperfections. I've got boo-boos, I've got skin imperfections, I've got crooked eyebrows, uh, my bangs half the time grow so fast they grow crooked, you know, I have wrinkles coming in like crazy, I'm getting older by the day, but you know, um, those imperfections in my face or my body, which has lots of imperfections, shouldn't drag me down because God created me this way. You know, he created me not to have imperfections, but my body does what it does. And sometimes I just need to accept that aging is part of life. God created us to age and move through life. I can't let all these wrinkles you're seeing get me down. And I am sorry you are having to stare at this mug, but that's just the way it is. Um, but I can do things to try to fix some of these imperfections, like today I put on a little makeup, put on some different jewelry, did a little different hairstyle, uh, wore a color shirt I don't normally wear, got me out my other bracelet. You know, there's, there's lots of things you can do to distract from your perfections, put a little wrinkle cream and a little makeup on, a little different clothes, clothing, but you know, those uh, imperfections are just part of life. But there's another area of imperfections in my life. That's my spiritual life. I have imperfections or other things known as sin in my life that I need to get rid of. I need to confess and repent, you know, when I do see sins in my life. But the problem is the devil likes to step in and stomp his foot of guilt on me and press me down hard to the ground and make me feel bad about all my imperfections, my sins in my life. I mean, I can have a quiet time for a couple hours, great time with the Lord, and then within 10 minutes of finishing my couple hours with the Lord, I can get up and sin. Now that really disgusts me and really brings on a lot of guilt when that happens because I feel, how could I do that? How could I have great quiet time and then turn around and 10 minutes later have a sin pop out? Well, that's human nature. Sin is in us. It all started back with Adam and Eve in the garden. God created this perfect, perfect place, uh, a beautiful garden for man to dwell in and to fellowship with him. And sin entered the picture. The perfect garden became an imperfect world. Sin entered the world. Men were sinful. 
uh, nature began to feel the curse of the sin and all these imperfections we see in the world, uh, imperfect governments, imperfect uh, health systems, imperfect education systems, imperfect environment, uh, uh, imperfect relationships. But what we've got to remember is that we're passing through this imperfect world heading to a better place. We have a better future ahead of us. But let's take a look at some scripture that I wanted us to focus on, on dealing with our imperfections and this world we live in and in our life, our own imperfections. Oh, here's my glasses. Let's see. I'm so used to putting them on top of my head. Easier to find there because they're always there with me. But let's look at uh, Hebrews um, 12, 1 through 2. I know if we're concerned about our walk with the Lord and the imperfections and sins we have in it, this is a good couple of verses to remind us about where we need to focus. Hebrews 12, verses 1 and 2. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who, for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. We have a lot of people around us that are watching us, and our, our testimony is important. It is important that we lay aside our sins and try to run the race as best we can. We don't want to be uh, hindering others by the sinful life that we might be leading. So we need to lay aside those sins and get rid of those imperfections in our life as best we can. But we may feel like we, we can't do it. And it's true. We can't lay aside our sins on our own. We need Jesus. He is the one that's going to do the work in us, even when we're feeling like we are just constantly falling down in sin. It says, look unto Jesus. We have to keep our eyes focused on him, whether it's through reading the word, listening to Christian music throughout the day, uh, keeping good conversations going with Christian friends throughout the day and the week, uh, being accountable to other Christian brothers and sisters that will help us when we fall. Um, whatever the case is, look unto Jesus, pray unto him, get Christian sisters and brothers to help you, look into his word to help you, keep your eyes focused on Jesus, and you'll find you'll have less sin going on in your life, and it'll be a lot easier to lay aside those sins that ensnare us. Um, but what's really cool about this verse in verse 2 is uh, he's the finisher of our faith. We may feel like we're not making enough progress, we're, we're stumbling again, too many imperfections in our spiritual life, but God will finish the work that he begun in us when we receive Jesus as Lord and Savior. He will accomplish what he wants to do. He's the author and finisher. He, be, he began a good work in us, and he will finish a good work in us. Even when we see all these imperfections in our spiritual walk with the Lord, when we see we've sinned, when we see we've hurt someone's feelings, when we see we've uh, not kept up on our commitments to God, when we when we find out we've we've cussed or we've gotten angry or we've or we've uh, been neglectful in some other area of our spiritual life, God will finish the good work He's begun begun in us. He will take care of us. He will help us to reach that goal, that finish line. So don't let the imperfections of your spiritual life drag you down. Don't let the devil step on you and crush you with his foot. Jesus crushed his head at Calvary, and he's taking care of our sins. We just simply need to confess and repent and turn to him and ask him to help us not to sin, not to get caught up in imperfections and guilt of the imperfections. I want us to look off another verse, just a page back in my Bible, actually just the next page over, Hebrews chapter 11, uh, verses 13 through 16. Hebrews 11, 13 through 16. These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, were assured of them, embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. For those who say such things declare plainly that they seek a homeland. And truly, if they had called to mind that country from which 
they had come out, they would have had opportunity to return. But now they desire a better, that is a heavenly country. Therefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. The reason I'm bringing up these verses is not only to, like it said in chapter 12 of Hebrews, to look unto Jesus, to be the author and finisher of our faith, and keep our eyes fixed on him, but in Hebrews chapter 11, 13 through 16, especially in verse 16, it reminds us that we need to desire that better country, that heavenly country, um, and, and look for, look for into the future our, our time in heaven, in that special city that God has prepared for us. These imperfections we face in this world, the dilemmas, the problems, the trials, our sins, per personal imperfections in our face and body, whatever imperfections that we're facing, it's all going to pass away. What a glorious thing to remember, to know that, that our future is going to be without sin, without imperfections, without imperfect governments, without imperfect relationships, without imperfect bodies. We're going to have everything new and created in a, a, a more fabulous way. It's going to be Jesus who reigns, and we're going to be there with him in our future time reigning with him. What a, a great thing to look forward to and to keep our eyes focused on as we go through this imperfect world. Yes, sin has entered this world, but there's a world coming that's far better. So keep your eyes fixed on Jesus. Keep your thoughts focused on the future ahead. Make your decisions in this life based on that future and your relationship with Jesus. Don't make your decisions or thought processes based on the imperfect things of this world. Use the Bible, use time and prayer to refocus your thoughts towards that future, towards the things Jesus wants you to do in this life, in this imperfect world. What can you do to help this imperfect world situation? It's just like me, the imperfections of my face or my body. Sure, I'll do some things like wrinkle cream or makeup or jewelry or a new outfit, a new haircut to fix myself up, to distract from the imperfections of, my, of myself. What can I do in this world, in the spiritual realm, or in building this kingdom, God's kingdom in this world, that will make it a better place, that will help to take some of the imperfections out of this world? What, what should I be doing? So keeping our eyes fixed on our future and the, the, the future kingdom we're entering should affect the decisions we're making in this world, how we're helping to remove imperfections in this world. One, by trying to live a sin-free life, getting rid of those sins that entangle us. Two, by sharing God's good news to the world. That's one way to get rid of the imperfections of the world. Be more active in sharing the good news of what Jesus did for us on the cross. That's the most important thing we could do. The more people that come to know Jesus, the more, the more enhanced our world will become the less imperfections will be, the less evil, the, the, the less horrifying things. So make it our goal to reach people for the Lord to help remove some imperfections from this world. And keep yourself focused on God to remove the imperfections from your life. Thanks for joining me.